Hey guys, welcome to the interface and navigation tutorial for Blender. This is for absolute beginners. If you guys want to know how to navigate the viewport or how to navigate these menus and stuff like that, that's what this video here is for. We're not going to go over what the menus do, but we are going to go over how to move around in them. Now, the first things first is the viewport. Now, to navigate in the viewport and in Blender in general, a very important button is going to be the middle mouse button as shown here on this little graphic, which you'll see moving later on. But the middle mouse button is only found on a three button mouse. Now, if you guys don't have a three button mouse, we highly recommend you get one. However, there is a way to get around this requirement by using the emulate three button mouse setting. So I'm gonna show you guys how to set that if you don't have a three button mouse. But if you do, go ahead and skip forward. So if you want to emulate a three button mouse, go ahead and go to file and then go to user preferences go to your input settings and then make sure this option is checked emulate three button mouse now once you have that checked you should be able to use alt and left click in place of your middle mouse button so moving forward I'm gonna assume you have a middle mouse button but every time I say middle mouse if you don't have a middle mouse button just simply know that you can hold alt and left click to do the same thing now here we go so how do you navigate in the viewport with the middle mouse button Make sure your mouse is in the viewport section of the screen and go ahead and click and drag with your middle mouse button across the screen and you'll notice that you're going to start revolving around a focal point here. And right now the focal point is the cube. Now this focal point can change and it will once we do this, which is if you hold shift and then middle mouse drag, you'll start panning, which is another very useful navigation tool. So you can pan in the viewport as well, but once you do and you start rotating again, you'll notice that the focal point has changed. We're no longer focusing on the cube. We're now focusing on this area here, whatever is, there's nothing there, but it's focusing around this area, revolves around that empty area. Now the cube is over here now. So if we ever wanted to focus on the cube again, we would have to press this button, which is period on the number pad. Now, if you don't have a number pad, you can do something similar where you go to File, User Preferences, Input, and then click Emulate Number Pad. And then you can actually click the period on your keyboard. If you don't have this checked, the period on the keyboard does something else. But that is another option that you can do if you don't have a number pad. Now, the number pad is uh, very helpful for stuff like that. But to continue, we also have the Zoom In and Out function, which is with the scroll wheel, again, the middle mouse button. And that's just scrolling in, zooms in, and then scrolling out. I should say scrolling up, zooms in, and scrolling down, zooms outwards. So very intuitive there. You can pretty much move around anywhere that you want with these functions. You can just sort of willy-nilly navigate the viewport just like so. So there's a few more things I think you guys should know about navigating the viewport. And I went ahead and replaced the cube with this monkey here, otherwise known as Suzanne, who's basically Blender's mascot. And... Uh, I did that so that it's a little bit more clear to see what I'm about to do. So I'm going to go ahead and press Z to show you what wireframe mode looks like. And that's how you get into wireframe mode. So now you can sort of see through the object. And you can also hit Z to go back into solid mode, as you can see. And there's something you can do with the number pad. A few things you can do with the number pad that are very important for navigating the viewport. I mentioned the number pad earlier. If you click the emulate number pad, setting and make sure that's on you can also use five on your number row but number pad is preferable because the number row actually does something else as well that's very useful which we'll go into later so the first thing i want to teach you about the number pad is the orthographic mode and the orthographic mode is basically first of all it's achieved by pressing the five button on the number pad and what this does is this kind of flattens all the perspective that you may have had with the object and allows you to see something from essentially a 90 degree angle where everything is sort of perfect. If you take it off orthographic mode and go into perspective mode, as you can see here, it sort of has, it looks more realistic because that's how the real world works, but it has distortion. So you won't be able to see everything lined up perfectly, for example. Now, the other things you can do are one for front, and I can go and hit five here so you can notice the difference here. So notice the perspective because the monkey is a little bit closer in the front, a little bit further in the back the distortion of the size of those vertices is there. If you don't want that distortion and you want to model a little bit more accurately, orthographic mode is your friend. You can also use three for the right side and you can use control three for the left side. You can also use control one for the back side, by the way. And seven is top and obviously control seven is bottom. And nine, if you don't want to hit control, 
actually switches for you to the opposite of whatever mode you're looking at right now. So I can go to front mode, press 9, and it goes to back mode. I can go to right mode, press 9, and it goes to left mode. So that's a very interesting thing that will be very helpful for navigating. Just so you guys know what the other buttons are for. 4, 8, 2, and 6 are used as navigational, rotational arrow keys, so to speak. So these will actually allow you to rotate around the viewport in a way very incrementally with uh, the number pad. So, so that's a very helpful tool to have in your arsenal. And one more number on the number pad, which is zero, that brings you to your active camera. So you can switch between camera mode and viewport mode just like so, very simply. And whenever you're in the camera, by the way, you can actually just start navigating and it'll bring you out of the camera automatically. So that should feel very natural to you. And then uh, let's go into the menus here. You may or may not see these two menus on the left and right, actually. And if you don't, you might need to press T or N. Now, T or N basically allow you to open up these two menus. T is the left side and N is the right side. I believe T is for toolbar and N is for properties. Don't ask me why, but that's, uh, that's, that's what it's for. So those uh, menus will have a couple other uh, interesting context things here. So you can do that. You might want to double check what these tabs do as well. Go ahead and look through those. You can also hover your mouse over this and scroll down through these tabs if you want to do that. Now over here, same thing, there's a bit of a scroll necessary for this tab. So you're going to use the scroll wheel for that, or you can click and drag the middle mouse button, just like the viewport, and you can sort of scroll up and down that way. Same with these. So pretty self-explanatory. You can either scroll or click and drag with the middle mouse button. And um, yeah, that does a lot of uh, a lot of navigation in Blender already. So very important to have a middle mouse button, in my opinion. That's why I recommend that you get one. But again, there are options. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It's a very basic overview for how to navigate the viewport and the interface in Blender. And uh, that's it.